what's up? Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's good? Red Panda Anthem. It's your boy. Um, okay, let's talk about Kanye West. Uh-oh. Gene, yes. Kanye, shout out to Ye. If you haven't seen the documentary, uh, go check it out. So, Ye, yeah, shout out to his documentary that's out there right now. Kanye changed the game again, or did he change the game again? Um, Don, Donda 2, mm-hmm. I'm sure everybody's already familiar with this, is only available on his stream player. It's a little shout out to Nikki. She actually did a dope Instagram live. I checked out the other day when she was talking about it. And I think she, she actually even had it. Um, it's the STEM player? It's a STEM player. And um, he actually put it out for the first mm-hmm. Donda um, album, mm-hmm. but it didn't really take off the way that, you know, I, yeah. I think he probably would have thought yeah. or would have hoped that it did take off. So repurposed it again and made it exclusive um, for, for that. Yeah. How has that done so far? So let's go over. You want to do the numbers? So the first part of it is that, yes, he did it before, but what the stem player does is actually allows you to take the beats change the tempos. You can actually like create your own sound from the original content that's put on there. So Apple offered him a hundred million, allegedly, reportedly a hundred million dollars to have Donna to exclusively on Apple music. And that's why he kept bringing up Larry Jackson, who's the director over there at Apple music. And that's um, why he brought up what you call it too. Um, Tim Cook. Right. He wanted to have a meeting with him rather than give me a hundred million. Let me talk to the CEO about ideas that I have. And so from that, he said, all right, well, I'm going to put the down to two on the stem player. In three days, he sold over 12,000 units, right? So I think he made over $2.7 million, which is the equivalent of him selling two, uh, 220,000 uh, albums, right? The problem is that he netted 100% profit off of each one of those stem players, whereas if he had sold 220,000 albums, he would have netted 12% of the profit. And that was his thing, right? Rather than taking 12% and all the, like, the label and the streaming services taking the money, I'm going to take 100% in three days, which is, is it a game changer? Yes, but because it's Kanye West, the pro that we don't know is the amount of technology and the amount of uh, finances that it took to actually get the stem player in production. What's the profit margin? That's what we don't know. Exactly, right? Like, and he's in a billionaire status. So can yeah. every artist do that? But it costs $200. It costs two hundred dollars. So you do the math on that, right? He, does, he sells twelve uh, thousand two hundred dollars a pop. Okay. Bing bong. Ian, what's your what's your thoughts on this? I think it's genius. It won't change the music. Uh, the day that it happened, Mario, uh, he was at with Tech and uh, Chains at Nikki Studio. He called me. He's like, "Hey, Kanye's in the middle of negotiation." I'm like, "Business lesson one: Write that down. Do everything in your power to get leverage when you go into negotiation. Number two: Have to control your own ecosystem." So maybe his deal was structured at 12%. Maybe some newer artists are at 16, but I always thought it was a mistake. And we had these conversations privately and you're like, hey, everyone doesn't think like you, doesn't think like us. I'm like, why, why are people giving everything away for nothing? Most people don't want to build. So I think it's brilliant that he put a piece of hardware together. And this plan reminds me of what Square used to do back in the day when they would give out like the free reader, even though this cost. I think it's going to work pretty well. Um, and then on the revenue side, every artist may not be able to do it, but yay, call us. Um, if he will license one, I know Nikki's coming uh, out, but but if he licensed one out for every person, <laughs> now what that sound it. like? And we talked last week, a lot of artists are going to go to the video game side and even some of the talks I've been having with Def Jam and Scope. I'm like, hey, the okay, it doesn't make sense. Shout out Ross. If you if you get a producer to make you a track, and let's say now it costs you fifty thousand, the engineer costs you twenty five hundred. Why does it make sense to sell that song for ninety nine cent, and it costs you that much for one song? And no other business would you do this. Shout out to everybody who t- took your Rolex strategy and remix it and then tag you in it. But it'd be like <laughs> selling a Rolex, like yo, I'm gonna get you a fifty thousand dollar Rolex, but sell it to your fans for seven dollars. What? No, uh, but it, because it's, uh, I don't want to go into my little conspiracy bag, but I think artists of a certain hue always get told to devalue their art and charge less for it. When, if he can sell five, 600,000 the first week, if he gets 50, 60 artists behind him, maybe they could collectively sell six, seven, 700,000 units of their stem player in a week. And those economics could look dramatically different. So I think okay. it's amazing. I love it. Lucene is cool, but Lucene don't write. Doug ain't this nice. Yeah. I mean, right? well, well see, and then it, ultimately it'll probably be on streaming services 
I, I think, eventually. Yeah, I think he'll, he'll probably have to come with a deal after. But, I mean, maybe he doesn't have to, right? Does he have to, really? He doesn't have to, but I think that he probably will if history is any indicator. Like, even when Jay-Z made his music yeah. title and then after a while he put it on other streaming services, mm-hmm. you know, because you, I think he still probably wants... It's going to reach the public regardless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, listen. Dan and I was going to get it, like... It's gonna be out there. All the kids in Brooklyn, all the drill kids, they're gonna be out the same day. Somebody gonna, gonna rip that stem apart. They're gonna, it's gonna go be floating around. They're gonna figure out how to burn CDs again. <laughs> Man, it's gonna be up that day, all in the captions, right? But um, I think it's a brilliant move. And like you said, I think he should keep some music exclusively for the stem, though. But it's one thing I think he needs to beef up the offer because I saw a lot of people like, I can't afford the 200. What should I do? Yeah. Uh, the last point I want to make, man, make an offer so irresistible that even your enemies can't t- turn it down. The one thing I do love about, about Fat, well, many things, but one thing I love about Fat Joe, when he was talking about 50, when him and 50 was getting into it, he was like, man, when I heard in the club, I couldn't even front. I'm like, that's the bar. You have to be so good that even the people who don't like you are going to buy from you. If he beef up that offer, and let's say he did an exclusive something every week for 10 weeks or eight weeks. Phew. Be amazing. This day, red panda anthem. Ian, what's up? This day, red panda anthem. Red panda, what's good? Red panda anthem. Your boy going up. I know they can't stand it.